Well, many of you have seen the headlines. A massive brood of cicadas getting ready to emerge after 17 years underground. In a special report, I take a look at where we can find them in our viewing area and learn there's just one place in the Carolinas that will likely have the chance to experience the sights and deafening sound as millions of these giant bugs take over the East Coast. What's louder than a weed whacker in the springtime? Jamie Rutherford knows. And it's kind of neat to start out with, but then it kind of gets annoying. We're talking about cicadas, the loudest bugs in the world. Some groups reaching 100 decibels, enough to drown out a lawnmower. It can get on your nerves after a while, I mean, because it's a, just a, a loud hum and it doesn't stop. Rutherford happened to move to the Carolinas when the last massive 13 year brood emerged in the upstate. It's the males that you're hearing chorusing in the background right now. Clemson University entomologist Dr. Eric Benson studied that great southern brood of 2011. The periodical broods that we have are pretty much an East Coast phenomenon. Uh, Today, he's the go-to person to set the record straight about one of the largest and longest living insects in the world. What's cooler than a bug that, that's been underground for 13 or 17 years that emerges? And it kind of is an indicator of the health of your of your environment. The first lesson in Cicadas 101, they're mostly good for the environment. Unlike locusts, which are not the same folks, cicadas don't ravage vegetation. For lesson two, let's step inside the bug lab. The annual cicadas are much larger species. The, the periodical cicadas are noticeably smaller. So that's why we hear some cicadas every year, but the black-eyed annuals don't compare to the red-eyed noisemakers that stay underground for either 13 or 17 years, only to emerge in the millions. When people live through a true periodical brood emergence, you'll remember it the rest of your life. And that brings us back to the present, since brood 10 and yellow on this forestry map is set to unearth itself this month. It's the soil temperature that determines exactly when the cicadas will emerge. They rise up over a two week period once the soil hits 65 degrees. Benson says you've got to dig deeper than the headlines to learn in our viewing area. Only folks in Cherokee, North Carolina will likely experience the two month long cacophony of mating periodic cicadas this spring. But in just three years, it will be the upstate's turn and Benson will be calling on citizen scientists once again, this time with better technology as brood 19 makes a roaring return after 13 years. But even back then, the cell phones were not as good and I with some other researchers would go to every site to confirm it. In 2011, his research landed this discovery. And we're finding in our research about 15% of all the cicadas that come out of the ground don't actually make it to be adults. Who knows what 2024 will bring? For Rutherford, one thing's for certain. It's 24 seven, that's constant, huh? But at least this time, he'll have a heads up, along with those noise canceling AirPods. <laughs> So how do periodic cicadas live for so long underground? Well, when they fall from the trees and burrow, they attach to roots and feed off the nutrients without harming the trees. When they mature and emerge, they provide food for hundreds of animals and eventually nutrients to the soil. For more things on cicadas, just include, a, we've got a link, I should say, to the brood map. Just look for that on WSBA.com.